So we're back here with this HP T5710 Thin Client. Just installed the Windows 98 on it. And we pretty much have everything we need in terms of drivers, some utilities. And I'm gonna get payphone software set up on this thing soon. But now that I have this nice clean image, it's probably a good idea to, to take a backup of the disk. And that is A, because I might wanna buy more of these things, run other software, or hey, maybe this thing, maybe it's gonna die eventually and then I need to replace it outright. So it's always good to have a backup in that case, but B, other people who saw me go through this whole process may say, hey, this is a good thin client for my needs, but I don't wanna go through that whole Windows 98 installation process. So once I can image the drive in this thing, then other people can use the image as well and sort of skip that step. So I'm planning on imaging it using a tool called Clonezilla. Now Clonezilla is available just as a bootable ISO. So we can get our old friend here, the easy to boot stick that I used to install Windows 98 on this last video and just boot right into Clonezilla, take our backup image and put it right on the flash drive itself that we're booting from. So that saves a lot of time as opposed to, oh, hey, hey kitty. That saves a lot of time as opposed to yanking the drive out, putting it in some sort of like IDE to USB adapter. That just seems like a lot of work when we could just do everything from the flash drive. So before I go ahead and stick this in and boot it up, let's go over to the laptop and uh, load up this flash drive so I can show you where we put the ISO and what version we're using. So I have the easy to boot drive plugged into my computer here. We, you can see that we're in the root directory now. And if I go into this ISO directory, and then down here to the main menu directory, you can see that amongst a couple other things in here, I have this Clonezilla Live ISO. So this is version 2.2.2. .2 .2. Dash 32 for 486 architecture. So this is a much older version. I think this is from 2012, 2013 or so. The issue that I was having is that even though the newer version of Clonezilla would boot, it would just take a long time to do anything. And I ended up giving up on it after waiting maybe half an hour for it to sort of fully load and it was just molasses slow. So I figured, okay, something a little bit older will probably run a little bit better for this hardware considering it's from the mid 2000s. So I pretty much arbitrarily just picked Clonezilla 2.2.2. And um, yeah, it ends up working for us here. So I'm gonna eject this flash drive and we're going to go back over to the thin client, boot it up, and then start the process of actually cloning the drive. We're now at the easy to boot menu. So I'm just gonna go down here to option four for Clonezilla. Select that, hit enter. Now for whatever reason, it seems to complain that I'm loading in ISO. And even though that's kind of the point of this whole thing, and then it just automatically is like, okay, yeah, let's do an ISO. And then it'll finally boot up here. Okay, so we're now in the Clonezilla menu. So I'm just gonna do a this, the default option here, Clonezilla Live, default settings, VGA 800 by 600.
So now it'll have us choose a couple of options before we fully boot up here. So I'm going to pick my language, hit enter, and then I don't want to change anything with my keyboard. The defaults are fine, so I'll just hit enter again. And now we can finally hit the option here to start Clonezilla. So I'm going to do a device to image here. This is the first selection. So I'm going to be taking the device and making an image out of it. So that's already selected, so we'll just hit enter. And then there's a lot of options here for where we actually want to save the image to. It's pretty cool. You can actually do it to like an SSH server, Samba server, NFS server. That makes it really convenient. But we're just going to be doing this to the flash drive. So it's already selected local dev for local device. So we'll just hit enter. And then it's saying, hey, insert a device now. We're going to use the one we're booting from. It's already inserted. So we'll just hit enter again. If you wanted to, you could use a totally separate device, but we're just using the USB stick that's already there. Okay, so now we actually have to choose the device here so that we can save the image. So we're going to want to save it to the flash drive, as I've mentioned. So we want this second option here this 28 gig NTFS partition, um, as opposed to the top one here is the FAT32 Windows 98 partition. The bottom one here is that FAT32 partition on our flash drive itself that we were using to copy over utilities in the last video. So we'll choose the second one here, hit enter. And then we're just gonna put it in the top level directory. We don't have any sort of images directory already on here. And then we'll hit enter to continue. So we'll do beginner mode just because it's going to be the most straightforward. And then we have the option here if we want to save the entire disk image or the partition. So I've read the pros and cons of each one. I think that because this disk just has one partition, it makes sense to just save the partition itself instead of having to deal with the whole disk image. So we're gonna go down here to save parts and hit enter. And then we need a name here. So I like the fact that it has the date there, but I'm just gonna add some stuff here. So HP T5710 underscore win 98 SE. So we know the machine, we know what it's running, and then we have the date that we're doing this. So now that we're ready to go, we can hit enter. Now we have to select the partition or partitions that we want to image. So to do this, you actually have to use the space button to toggle it. So we have selected the 3.8 gigabit gigabyte FAT32 Windows 98 partition. And then if we tab over to OK, we're ready to image so we can hit enter. And then because I know the health of this drive and I know it's pretty good, I'm just going to skip the checking repairing file system steps. We should just be fine to proceed right now. And then after the image is saved, I do want to check if it's restorable. That's sort of the whole point. We're not just making a, a save to inspect or, you know, sort of dive through later. That We want this to be restorable. So, yeah, let's check this saved image. And now it's actually going to commence the imaging process. So we can hit enter to continue. And then we are sure we want to continue saving the image in that destination from that partition.
Okay, now everything is imaged, it's verified, so we're finally ready to close out of Clonezilla. So now I'm going to power everything off and we're going to take this drive out back to the computer so we can inspect everything that it's saved when creating this image. Here we have easy to boot back up again, flash drives inserted. So we're at that same directory that we were earlier in the video, but now here is our backup image directory. So you can see here, it is down to 365 megabytes, not bad from a four gig partition. I forget if they actually sort of clean up that free space in the partition or if this just has so much compression on it. If we look in here, it's really just this image GZ AA file that's taking up all the space here. So it could be a combination between them sort of pruning space on the drive and compression, or it might just be flat compression here. And that's just how much we end up saving from that. But yeah, we can see that there's the image file created and then there's all of these other metadata files or descriptor files that I personally don't think I have a use for. I don't believe that these are critical for doing any sort of restoration. I think you just need that image file. But if you're dealing with any piece of data, you're only getting half the story if you just have the image. All of this other data that was created in the creation of the image is likely just as important in some regard anyway. But yeah, now we have our image file. So this thing is totally backed up. I can go ahead and make this available to others. But more importantly, this is probably gonna aid me in the future. So I'm gonna safe keep this somewhere on a hard drive so that it's easy to access if I ever need to do a restoration. So until that time occurs and I have to go through the restoration process, that'll cover our use of Clonezilla and imaging for this video. But this was a really cool process. I'm really glad that I stumbled upon this software and it really makes it just so simple provided that your machine boots that you can load this up and just do the image without actually having to open up the computer and pull the drive out. So very happy with the results. And now I can get on to actually using this machine and installing some more interesting software. So until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how you can do a uh, device to image copy here for this drive. And I will see you in the next one.